I get to Washington, and remember, I'm from Englewood, California. I didn't grow up watching the West Wing or <laughs> participate in the PAGE programs that were designed to preserve privilege. And so a lot of it was watching what other people who looked like me in some ways were doing and who were successful, and then modeling their behavior. Um, and ultimately, I also started to do the job that people were being paid to do, but I was there doing as a fellow. Mm. And close to the end of my fellowship was offered to work in the United States Senate under the leadership of, at the time, Ted Kennedy, uh, one wow. of our last great statesmen. Wow. I served for him until he passed, worked for Tom Harkin, um, a senator from Iowa. And when that was announced, I was like, oh, I'm out, because this man, I'm from Inglewood. Like, this isn't going to work, but also working with help, him helped me to appreciate that so many of our elected leaders at every level simply do the job because they care about equity. Mm. And they, they see they, they care about equity, oh. right? Not, not, not so much equality, but they care about leveraging power and oh. their positions of privilege to do the most for the least of these, right? Wow, what a um, breakdown. And I did that until I couldn't do it anymore, until I literally thought I was going to uh, flip a table uh, during a negotiation. I know that feeling. Um, or get escorted out by the uh, Senate Capitol Police. Um, so I took another pay cut. This is, I don't want well, that to be true. Before you go there, yep. so w what were the environmental circumstances that, that, had put you at, that had put you in that position yeah. to have to reevaluate the next step? Three in particular, and this was around, like, think 2010, 2012. Um, so one was the rise in the Tea Party sentiment, mm. right? This group that essentially questioned the role of government, not what government should be doing, but if there should be a government. Mm. Right? And so that effectively shut down what were previously contentious but still bipartisan negotiations. Right, mm -hmm. In the Senate, you learn that you have to negotiate. Even when you're in the majority, you have to negotiate, especially in that chamber because one senator can sh shut everything down. Mm -hmm. Right, um, So that was one. The second thing was the election of Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, that shifted the way that uh, I think at least two things happened. One, um, black people and people with other marginalized identities saw themselves in relationship to policy mm -hmm. and policy making. Um, and then the, the counterpoint to that is a lot of white folks and people who benefit from whiteness and white supremacy got even more mad, mm -hmm. right? So what was this uh, at least um, a desire to respect the process and engage in it shifted and folks were simply like, we're not, we're not gonna talk about policy. We're just, we're just gonna come to work and do absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. When I quit my job in the Senate, took a pay cut, and worked for the re-election uh, campaign, being the policy director for President Obama's campaign in Nevada. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Oftentimes when it comes to policy, policy feels like something so off in the distance, yeah. and everyday citizens don't necessarily engage yeah. in the process. Yeah. Uh, we know the voting percentages are not that great in many parts of the country, right? right? And yeah. that's a very simple, talk about that. A yeah, little so, bit about that. So I said, <laughs> I under, like that I said almost design. under my breath to that point is that, like, that's by design. I'm a, I mentioned earlier I'm finishing this PhD. I'm a sociologist. And the, the, I'm a sociologist in part because it's simply about observing the social world. Mm -hmm. We were born into a social world. I understand what Asa Hilliard said, which is that I've never met a child, in particular a black child, who is not a genius. Mm. Who is not a genius. Not a genius, underscore, right? Exclamation point. Wow. He says, there's no secret also to how we support them. We first acknowledge them as human, and we second support them with love. Now, mm -hmm. what I know is that most black folks don't get the kind of love and support that allow our genius to fully manifest mm -hmm. because there are institutions that design it that way. So right now, Preach. there are continued and concerted attempts to ensure that we can't vote, so that it's harder for us to create the kind of conditions in our communities mm -hmm. that allow us to thrive. So how do, how do you merge your efforts now for, uh, for people of color and then also the LGBTQIA plus um, yeah. arena? So because it, 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 cause they often are issues or, you know, politically. Um, they seemingly are at odds with each other. That's exactly, exactly. right. Exactly. And I appreciate both the, the words matter. There's power and precision. So I appreciate oh, I the... Let's name that this is about how it plays out in politics. Yes. And that it's, a, it's seemingly this way, because all of this is socially constructed. So a lot of my work is, again, being a disruptor than a connector. Oh, so I want to disrupt this idea okay. that, like, black people are not and have not always been queer with a capital Q. Right. Right? There's an author, Sombu Fusome, who talks about, like, on, in her native country, on a, on a part of the continent of Africa, they didn't have terms lesbian and gay 
but they celebrated the spirit of people that showed up as both and. Mm. Say right. that again. Both and. Both and. Right. So I have mm. a, a, another mentor, Freema Robowski, so which, says which, this. Now, how would that? And I don't mean to interrupt you, no, but it's it was okay. only because there's this this notion around binary, non-binary. Right. So when you just said both, yeah, that sort of speaks to a binary situation. Of right. Some right. Level. Right. And I remember you talking on an episode I, I recall from first season about celebrating and, 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 and encouraging more people to think about the diversity that exists in these terms that are otherwise simplified, right? Mm -hmm. right? So there's space for folks who might identify as pan, or trans, or non-binary, non-conforming, and adopt other terms. And also, I celebrate now that there are kids who are like, those terms are cute, but I don't like that either. Here's another one, <laughs> right? I also know that as I'm having this discussion, and I've named twice, I identify as same gender loving. I reject the idea of gay. In part because gay, to answer your question, mm -hmm. is a political construct mm -hmm. that has been used to advance an agenda mm -hmm. that might say gay, but it's really about white men who are closest to power That's what Aaron and proximity, said. right? Was so, about the high so when when people actually use the term, because we actually had a conversation before okay. around gay agenda and that that can be a bit of a trigger for some of people course. in the community. Of course. And so, and is... Do you believe in some way that part of what that nudge is that the gay agenda does is not as inclusive as it sounds? Mm. There you go. I, I, I use same gender loving for that reason, yes, because when people think of gay, they think of white folks, white men, they think of sex, they think mm -hmm. of deviancy, mm -hmm. um, yes. they might think about HIV. Mm -hmm. Seldom do they think about love. Ooh. And what I know, again, wow. as a student of history wow. and someone who loves black people deeply and wow. profoundly, is the lesson taught to us by James Baldwin, Uncle Jimmy, and Nikki Giovanni, which is that the solution to all of our problems is radical love. Mm. Right? So I insist on using a term yeah. that holds more space for me. And here's the thing. I know black folks who identify as gay and who love it. I, I even know as, as much as I insist on saving you the love, somebody's going to be like, that gay boy was talking well. <laughs> it's fine. But at some point, it's going to shift. And I also understand that, like, this is tough for people. Sometimes folks are like, there are too many damn acronyms already. I don't want another one. Mm -hmm. Here I go. I would love for us not to need them. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. But, but as long as you have your privilege, which is wrapped up in you not needing to be defined, Ooh, because yes. you're in a position of power, then you go get all these acronyms. Yes. You're going to get all this energy until we shift stuff so we can all otherwise be free. A did I answer your question? I mean, yes, you did. <laughs> Say the last no idea word you that you did. just said. Free. Oh, oh free. Yeah, I, yeah. I want you to elaborate. What, is, what does it mean to be free? Mm. So I am, uh, one thing that, that gives me fuel in, in spite of all of the challenges that we face now uh, is talking to, to young people. So my, my dissertation focuses on how whiteness and white supremacy functions in public schools and really erases the challenges and contributions of black, queer, trans, and non-binary young people. So what they talk about is being in spaces where they don't have to defend themselves, mm. where they never have to deal with the trauma of living in deficits, worrying about, do I have access to stable and supportive or safe housing? Mm -hmm. Do I have the ability to have food that's actually going to help to feed me, not just physically, but right. spiritually and otherwise, mm -hmm. right? Like, do I have the things that allow me to feel healthy, happy, and whole? And often when we think about our experience as Black people with a capital B, are black people that have intersectional identities, which are like most of us, right? Like most black right, people yeah. in this country as a result of white supremacy are either born with or made to have a disability, mm. right? Some of us, if we are brave enough, will invite the world in and say, I'm also a member of a sexual minority community. Mm -hmm. Similarly, black women are a global majority, right? Mm -hmm. So much of my work is also leveraging the privilege I have to read these books and be exposed to these theories to try and distill it in ways that make sense to my mother Mm -hmm. Right, who graduated high school early but never had the support to get through college. Mm -hmm. um, and to be disruptive in ways that I think will allow my, my babies, literal or figurative, to not have to have some of these conversations.